Hello, welcome to this video and I'm going to show you how to do this. And by this, it's a technique where if you merge your tractors to mono, you will see your watermark. So this is about stereo, mono collapse, spectral watermarking, whatever, you know. It doesn't sound weird in stereo. In mono, it sounds really weird. Because it's an effect you can only hear in mono. I saw that AU5 did this a couple years ago in Alien Weapon, right there. I also did it on my uh, Any% percent submission, right there. A little less clean, because I was in a rush. There it is. Sort of clean. The method is, is you use Spectral Compressor on the master of your track, but you use your spectral image as the, the sidechain input. So the way I'm generating my spectral images is I use Harma. The way I make these images is I literally just make a 516 by however long image, because uh, Harma ha is an additive synthesizer with 516 partials, so you can just have an image in here like this. You turn the scale down, I pitch it down so that it can fit, and I make this uh, the phases of all the partials random, because if you have like a saw wave, the main click here is where all the phases are, li are aligned like this, and the spectral will look like this depending on your window size. If you randomize the phases of everything, they'll all be like all over the place and it like fills it more in and you can kind of see that. It looks like a bunch of lines but as soon as I randomize the phase, it sort of fills it in better. So this is a spectral image. Make a new pattern, obviously put a note down. C4 usually, but that's already two octaves down so that's C2. And then I just automate the time from 0 to 100 as it's being played. And that gives you your image, the image that you drew in whatever you drew it in. Uh, it's not exactly the cleanest thing, so another thing you can do is is add on like spectral clipping to to gate out the not as loud features of the spectrum. You can change your window size or whatever, but for the tutorial, I think that's clean enough. Like that looks good enough. Now. I do this on the master before I like clip or anything, but the blah, blah, blah. you out you output your spectrum thingy into spectral compressor. So the main mix goes into input one, right? And you can add an input, add an input, and your side chain will go in through here. Also, yes, you should turn this down because it is side chain. Or if you want, you can just right click and do side chain to this track only. You can do this in whatever other way you want in whatever DAW you're using. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so here's spectral compressor and I'm just gonna like zero out everything. I'm gonna keep this around like a thousand. The main the main part is using this sidechain compression uh, option here. Also in FL, you can enable sidechain through here. So track one, which is our one input, is this one, which is the track which we're sending our image through. Look at that, it's got the, the image, it's there, and you just put the threshold and you crank the downwards compression like a lot. And it'll sidechain this out of the main sound, which is just... <laughs> As you can see, it's like carving it out of the spectrum. If that's not enough, if one isn't enough, you can just add a second one. Just do the same thing. Add, add your audio input. That is still a bit wig jiggly, wiggly, wiggly. Maybe 1024 is not enough. It's got like 512. I mean, you can really take the time you want to make it how you want it to look. You can, if yeah, just, just take in mind if you go too low, it can cause undesirable effects, so you might want to just use multiple spectral compressors. But like, usually two is enough. So this is now, whatever comes out of this guy here, is the signal that doesn't have the spectral image in it. Right? The next step is to mix this phase invertedly with the dry signal. So to make phase inversion in, in FL or polarity flipping, you just use like stereo shaper and you do that. And that's this. You mix the two together to get whatever you're missing. Also, it has the other stuff in it too, for some reason, because I think this is too low. That's a bit icky. <clears throat> I'd keep these both above 25, or just not even deal with that. Okay, that's weird. <clears throat> the next step is to merge it to mono, actually. Wait, <clears throat> you're gonna make this mono. But you wanna flip one of the channels, like this. That makes it you can't even hear this on mono, but like, 
This is now a completely m incompatible mono signal. This just deletes itself whenever you stick it into mono. As you can see, the spectrum is displaying nothing because this is already collapsed mono. And then you just add it back to the signal without itself in it. Yeah, put that into Audacity. Oh, it's it's kind of <laughs> more louder. Oops, that was because I was a bit silly here. And when you're making stuff mono, you're actually supposed to half the signal because you're averaging two channels. So that's that's the basic gist of it. And you should make it a preset like what I've done, which is the exact same thing. And then you can put you can put literally anything in here. So for me, I I put my logo in here. I just go. <laughs> Also, do keep in mind that you should try to keep it below 5k and like above like 1k because you're going to hear it a bit more obviously if it's like down below 1k and compression is just going to destroy it above 15k. So that's how you do that. It's very simple. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes it can come with artifacts. Sometimes if you do it better, it's not going to really like show up as much. But that's clean. That's clean enough. Usually when you're looking through a spectrum, you will notice that it's not entirely clean here. That's just how the way spectrums are. You're going to get what's called spectral leakage. They're a bit leaky. Blackman Harris is like a good window to avoid leakage here. But like at that point, it's just up to how the viewer or the listener looks at it through the spectrum. So it doesn't really matter too much. All that matters is their window size and range. Like 128, they're not going to see anything. 8000, they might see something, but it's not, it's very blurry. Uh, the reason why you can't ever have a perfect spectrum is because of the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, but it should look like this. <laughs>